Eric Holder, attorney general, who was speaking about the Voting Rights Act uh, in front of a group of uh, Mexican uh, Americans, Mexican American League a Defense and Education Fund. This is last week, so a little bit old, but very interesting. Uh, have a listen to what uh, what uh, Mr. Holder has to say here. Cut number two. Well, let me be clear. While this country has indeed changed, and real progress has been made, thanks to groups like Meldup and many others, we are not yet at a point where the most vital part of the Voting Rights Act can be described as unnecessary or, and I say this with all due respect, or a product of a flawed political process. Justice Scalia is wrong. So in other words, we don't have real fairness in voting yet. It still eludes us. We have made some progress, but you know what? We still don't have a real equality, real fairness uh, in, 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 in the, at the ballot box. So what are we missing? You know, what is, the, what is the remaining element that we need to deal with here in order to have a freer, a juster society, according to Eric Holder? Well, let's find out. Cut number three. That's why today's Justice Department has vigorously defended Section 5 as an indispensable tool for eradicating discriminatory election practices. It's why Maldov has stood shoulder to shoulder with us in this effort, filing an amicus brief arguing that Section 5 must be upheld and working hard to safeguard the rights of language minorities. And Aha! Language minorities. Language minorities. So this is not just minorities. These are minorities who also don't speak English. So what he's talking about is ballots in other languages. Now, I mean, first of all, I mean, most ballots, I mean, as far as the voting for the president, I mean, e even if you don't know how to speak English, you can probably figure out which candidate you want. I mean, the names are going to be the same in any language. And, you know, I'm pr I don't know. How do you say Democrat in Spanish? Democratia? Republica? I mean, I I'm sure that if you only speak Spanish, you can get a ballot and figure out which candidate you want to vote for. I think it's probably true of just about any ballot. Now, maybe for these complex measures, they might have propositions and stuff like that. Then obviously you probably have to know how to read the language of the country that you live in uh, to be able to vote in the election. But what's wrong with having people May, are making it difficult for people who don't speak English to vote. I mean, don't you want people who are voting in our election to at least have taken the time to learn our language? I mean, don't you think that would make them a more responsible voter if they at least had were responsible enough to learn how to speak the language of the country that they're a citizen of? I mean, you got to be a citizen to vote, right? There's a test for citizenship. I don't think they give the test in Spanish, or do they? I mean, don't you have to take the citizenship test in English to become a citizen? Right? Don't you have to know rudimentary English to take that test? Or, you know, can, do they give it in all sorts of languages? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do have it in, in, in Spanish and Italian and French, which, is, which seems to be ridiculous. Because if you're going to give somebody a test to become an American, I mean, what's the point of the test if you don't even have tests that they can speak English, which should be like, you know, this is it. You want to be a citizen, although I don't know why anybody would want to be a citizen now. You know, I mean, it, it's really, you know, because if you become a citizen and you become successful, it's going to cost you a fortune to renounce it. But, I mean, wouldn't we want this? Doesn't make any sense. I mean, think about it. Little kids can't vote. You have to be 18 to vote. Why? You know, when, when you know, because the voting age used to be 21, right, too, but we made it 18. But why was it 21? Why is it 18? I mean, why don't we let little kids vote, right? What's, I mean, why can't toddlers vote or, pre, or certainly elementary school kids? I mean, what is the, the purpose of saying that you have to be 18 years old to vote? Well, the purpose is because we think that if you're younger than 18, you might not be informed enough and intelligent enough to cast a responsible vote. Well, isn't that undemocratic? I mean, to try to make sure that we have a more responsible, a more, you know, educated electorate. I mean, that's the whole goal there. That's why little kids can't vote. But if you hear politicians talk today, there should be absolutely no discrimination when it comes to voting. Then why don't we let little kids vote? 
You know, I mean, I mean, they're not, are they going to vote any worse than their parents? You know, are are you know? No, probably not. I mean, what's the difference now? The di- the I- the idea that an American somehow is smart when he's eighteen and can make a responsible vote, I I, I doubt that highly. I mean, it might, it might be more interesting if we let little kids vote. Can you imagine how some of these par- politicians would pander to kids? I mean, talking about the free stuff where they really have to up the ante. You know, and you, it doesn't take a lot to buy the vote of a five-year-old or a six-year-old, right? Free ice cream, free, you know, free toys. I mean, can you imagine what the politics in America would be like if little kids could vote? But as far as I'm concerned, we're a nation of little kids. We all vote like little children. We just respond to different free stuff. I mean, free toys, you know, maybe we're not going to go to the ballot box and, and, and vote for the candidate that wants to give out a free toy. But if it's a free cell phone, oh, well, you know, we'll vote for that. You know, we'll vote for a lot of freebies, but, you know, maybe not just an ice cream cone or, you know, whatever, whatever it's going to take to buy off the votes of the young people. But, you know, can you imagine all the political ads that they'd have on Sesame Street and that they'd have on all the Saturday morning shows? I mean, it would be just, a, you know, just a riot to see, you know, the type of uh, commercials that President Obama would come up to directly appeal to five and six year olds. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the ads are already on that level anyway, the ones that are aimed at their parents who were educated in in government schools. But in the spirit of democracy, let's just let everybody vote. In fact, why are we even restricting votes to citizens? Why don't we let the illegal aliens vote? Why don't we just let, why don't we just send our ballots out all across the country and let the whole world vote? on who our leaders should be. I mean, why should they have to live in America to vote? I mean, as, as, you know, why don't we just open it up to everybody and just let everybody have a say in, uh, in, 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 in who we... I mean, the whole thing is nonsense. The point of elections is to get... to elect competent people. And if you have to restrict uh, the voting to get more competent uh, leaders, then the country benefits. We benefited from that in the past. I think in the past we benefited from the fact that we didn't let little kids vote. But you know what? I don't know that we're benefiting from it anymore. So let's open it up. In the spirit of democracy, look, I got a a 10-year-old son. He'd probably cast a more responsible vote uh, than 90% or more of the electorate out there anyway. So let's open it up. Let's finally get rid of the last uh, bastion of freedom in this country and let the kids vote. That's it for today. You've been listening to The Peter Schiff Show here at SchiffRadio.com, the gold standard in talk radio.